really need to shave. Oh, what do you guys think? Should I shave? Let it go. I don't know. Excuse me, ladies. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to film something here. Hey guys, welcome back to Once Upon a Tiny Farm. My name's Drew. In today's video, I want to talk about quail and whether or not they are the new and improved chicken. So stick around and I'll give you seven observations I've had over the last month, my first month raising quail. So first observation is they're very quiet and that's what I've heard about quail and that's what drew me to get them. Um, as you could hear, I have chickens laying eggs right now and they can be uh, a bit noisy, not too bad. I've had some roosters with my chickens which are actually right next to them on the other side of this uh, fence. Um, you could hear the chickens, the quail, you wouldn't even know that they're there because they're super quiet. And when they do make noise, they sound more like a bird call and it sounds kind of nice. And we live in an area with lots of trees and we already have lots of birds making different calls. And a lot of the act actually like native birds to our area are louder than the quail. And really I don't hear the quail at all, but maybe during this video we'll be able to hear what the quail um, calls sound like because I actually think it's quite pleasing and quite nice. Another thing I learned about quail is that they're very, very messy eaters. And um, at first I had just another um, small like um, feeder that I usually used for like my baby chicks and stuff like that. But I noticed they would stick their beaks in and just get the food everywhere and a lot of it got wasted. Um, and I have their, their cage set up where there's a wire mesh on the bottom. So that was a problem because they're wasting feed and when they're knocking it down, it's going right through the grate. And there's no floor there um, because I want their poop to fall through. But um, they waste a lot of food and I didn't like that. So I ended up getting this um, feeder at Tractor Supply. And ever since I got this, like I, this is a perfect thing for quail. And I don't even fill it up um, a, a lot because I want them to put their heads in here and and have to reach for the food and it's less of a chance that they're gonna spill and waste food and feeds expensive and I've done a lot of videos talking about feed so don't want to be wasting food so I really like this for the quail it's also because of the size of them they can all um, have enough room to eat next to each other without trying to kill each other so really like this feeder it was only $4.99 at tractor supply so this thing is awesome another thing they don't even eat that much. Um, sometimes it's like two days until I have to put more food in here and I really like that. Another thing I really like about the quail is they take up so little space. Because they're so small, animals I could fit in this one, I think I made it about two feet by five or six feet, I don't remember long. But I could probably fit like 20 quail in here. Um, they grow super fast. But they're also small. Now these are Jumbo Coternix uh, quail. So they grow a little bit um, quicker and larger than like a regular quail breed, I guess. So that's what drew me to the Jumbo uh, Coternix quail. And uh, yeah, it's amazing because when, when they hatch, they were s they're so tiny and frail. Um, when they're born, they are so tiny. They're just like in the palm of your hand, so small. It, compared to when a baby chick is born, a chicken was like, baby chick is like three or four times bigger than a baby quail when they're born. Which I guess makes sense because even when these guys start laying eggs around eight weeks, now they're only at four weeks like I said, the, the egg size is about three to four times smaller for, um, to a reg, compared to a regular chicken egg, which is interesting. But I love how little space they take and I love how fast they grow. It's incredible how fast they've grown. In a couple more weeks, they'll be fully grown quail and um, I'll have to decide um, what I'm doing with them. I still don't know. Um, I definitely want to try some quail eggs. I've never had them before. And I'm assuming at least one or two of these is a rooster. I'm not um, entirely sure how to identify which one is the rooster yet. I'm gonna have to watch some videos and educate myself on that. But um, I want to also try to hatch some more quail. Um, soon so I could have a more sustainable food source um, right here in the backyard. This is pretty pretty cool that in only eight weeks you could have uh, a little meal right in your backyard and 
might be probably um, more economical than raising uh, meat birds because they don't eat as much food as a meat bird. But they're also not going to get as big as a meat bird, so there's trade-offs there. But I think there's a lot more pros to cons when raising quail. Another observation I had about raising quail is that, like the chickens, they poop a lot. Uh, they poop a ton. I'm, I was shocked at how much they poop and how often they poop. But that's what they do, and that's the reason that I made uh, the wire mesh on the bottom floor of this cage so that everything can just drop down to the ground. And eventually this will all be composted in my compost pile, but they poop a lot for these tiny little birds. Um, but yeah, just something to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, if I had these in a more um, natural kind of enclosed um, like run or something like that, I could see having to um, change out the bedding or add more mulch or whatever kind of bedding you had on the floor very often because of how much they poop. So it's just something to keep in mind. Another thing I did, um, not right away, but I did um, add um, after like a, their first week in here, is that I remembered that the people have mentioned that they need a sandbox or something kind of sand because they like to go in there and kind of give themselves like dust baths, kind of like chickens do. Um, that I've noticed the, it's the way that they clean their feathers and clean themselves off. Um, so they do this in a sandbox, and I had a whole bunch of sand um, bags laying around. So I put a little container in here with sand, and they seem very, very happy since I put that in there. And they're very messy with it, so I might need to come up with a better uh, thing to put it in so that they don't waste all of it, because like every day or two I have to put more sand in here. And it's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. But they seem a lot happier that they have a little sandbox in here. And uh, they're in there a lot just hanging out. And I can imagine when they start laying eggs that they probably end up laying eggs in the uh, sandbox. But uh, yeah. Um, now I'm just going to show you um, what I made here, and it's nothing uh, fancy, but uh, I put this together. I'm not the greatest builder. I, I've mentioned that in other videos. I don't like to make videos of me making stuff because I'm not, it's not my thing, but I try to make sure that things work. I don't really care about how they look, so, you know, that's just me, but I built this hutch. Um, it cost me nothing because I had all of these things laying around. Um, I've got four by four legs. Um, this wire mesh uh, was recycled from other pro um, projects that I just had laying around. So this actually would have been the most expensive thing, but I didn't have to buy it because I already had it. So that's cool. And that's what I have on the bottom uh, floor. I have the wire mesh. So whenever they have to poop, it just falls straight to the ground. I like that. Um, I also have made it on kind of a slope because I saw a lot of people um, do that with the quail when they lay the eggs. So since it's on a slope, the eggs will just roll to the front and I'll be able to open the door and grab them really easily. And I thought that would be cool. Um, I noticed that maybe I made this on too much of a slope, like maybe it's too much of a, of a slope for them, but I think they're adjusting and they're okay with it. And now that they have the sandbox, there's like a level place for them to, uh, to hang out. And they also end up hanging out on the back on the very um, edge of the back of the cage, there's like another flat surface for them to hang out. So it's kind of where they hang out most of the time. And that's where I put their water and their food back there, um, if you could see that. But um, yeah, it's very simple. Um, I have two doors that just open. Um, they keep pushing sand in here, making it kind of annoying to open and close. But I um, haven't had any issues with it so far. And I'm happy. I have a, I also have some metal roofing on top to keep the rain off of them, keep them dry. And uh, yeah, so far so good. One last observation I had about the quail is that they're just very small and frail. And uh, we had a couple that died after they hatched. Um, we hatched 12 and three of them died just from being too weak, which I've noticed is something that happens um, when you hatch chickens as well. Sometimes they're the ones that hatch later are often weaker. Um, but we had a couple of them hatch and die. They're also, they're so small that they took a little bit, I, I waited a little bit longer um, having them in the brooder. I kept them in the brooder a little bit longer to make sure that they grew big enough and enough feathers so that 
would be safe enough outside um, and be able to keep themselves warm. We also had another um, one of our, our quail that did survive the hatch and the brooder got put outside in the hutch and just randomly died one day. Um, not sure what happened there, but I did have this um, hutch in a different spot that gets a lot more sunlight and I think um, at least that one might have not had a place to hide from the sun and just got too hot. We got some really hot days um, early in spring. But that's just my theory. It could have been anything. But um, yeah, it's just an observation. They're very frail compared to the chickens. They're not as hardy as the chickens. All right. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap up this video on talking about uh, a few things I've learned about raising quail, my first month raising quail. Uh, if you found this video uh, helpful, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. I'd really appreciate it. The uh, channel's been really growing lately and I really appreciate it. A lot of people have been watching some of my older videos on making chicken feeds and stuff like that. But we do a lot of other stuff like um, gardening, uh, specifically how to grow the most food in very, very little space. And I'm doing a series on that called the 400 Square Foot Garden. And you can get more, video, um, more information on the 400 Square Foot Garden in the details below this video. Sign up for our email list and get some info on that. And learn how to grow food yourself all year long with um, succession planting and I have it all planned out for you. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.